the earliest high schools in the Harvey, Reno, and McPherson counties? If you answered Huffnangsau Preparatory School, you're right. The minutes of the July 21, 1907 meeting of the Bruderschaft of Huffnangsau Mennonite Church records the following statement, translated from German, quote, the congregation grants that an association be set up for the building of a Fortbildungsschule, or a high school, provided that such a school building be built near the church building, somewhere within one half mile from the church, and that the association be comprised of members of the Huffnungsau congregation. End of quote. This action paved the way for Huffnungsau establishing and operating a high school. Unfortunately, all of the official preparatory school records were destroyed in the Huffnungsau building fire of 1948. At the turn of the 19th century, it became even clearer that religious instruction in the American public schools was increasingly inadequate, and the congregation began to seriously discuss what should be done. In Russia, the Mennonites had enjoyed control over the education system within their villages, with a minimum of guidance from the government. In America, the public school system was controlled by the state and was supported by public taxation. Although the curriculum of the time allowed for opening devotions, time for Bible instruction sufficient for knowledge of the Bible drastically decreased. The school opened in 1907, and Huffnungsau elder A.J. Dick who also served as a minister for Bueller Mennonite Church, summed up the purpose in the following way. Quote, the purpose of the preparatory school is to provide the young people with an opportunity to be educated and prepared for work in the church and for the ordinary responsibilities of life. End of quote. Young people who had completed the ninth grade were admitted for a two-year course of study. The two-year curriculum was guided by at least four principles set out by the congregation. First, to prepare young people for college, namely Bethel College. Two, prepare young people for church work. Three, perpetuate the reading and writing of German. And four, to act as a supplement to courses offered in public high schools. While most courses were taught in German, some were taught in English. It offered a two-year course and specialized in classes toward entrance into an academy or college. The length of the school term was six months, which began in October. Tuition was set at $15, paid in advance, or $2.50 per month. The two-year curriculum was taught in English and in German with an emphasis on the Bible, but also included world history, reading, grammar, writing, singing, and note reading hymns and psalms, composition, geography, arithmetic, spelling, and penmanship. All were taught by one teacher. The school was also open to any person from other churches. The largest enrollment of the school was 48 students. The preparatory school consisted of a one-room wood frame building with a cloakroom hallway. A teacher's house and several other outbuildings were built on the schoolyard located just south of the Huffnungsau Church. The upstairs of the teacher's house, and later a separate building, served as a dormitory from Monday through Friday for long-distance students. A less reverent nickname for the preparatory school was Camp Schmoigne, which in Low German is probably best translated as Camp Romance. Recollections of extracurricular activities are captured in the booklet The Huffnungsau Preparatory School Story by Elder Albert Geddert, where on Friday afternoon, following the afternoon recess, spelling matches were held, competitive Bible verse recitations, singing bees, plus choirs, quartets, trios, football, and basketball. The school continued giving instruction until 1929, when it was discontinued increased competition and quality from public high schools, transportation difficulties, cost of tuition, and the shifting use of German to English, including difficulty of finding German teachers, all contributed to the school's closing. 
Elder Albert Geddard reflected on the closing of the school in the following way. Quote, whether we have actually found a better substitute for providing religious education for our youth from ages 14 through 17 is surely debatable. More and more the task of such training now rests with the family and the church. How well are we meeting the challenge? We probably are not quite in the position to say that yet at this point. End of quote. Elder Geddard's prophetic words may just be more profound today than when they were written. There is no doubt that the benefits of the preparatory school also blessed the young Bueller Mennonite Church, as Bueller's history is a good part of Hofnungshau's history. At this point in our 100 years of ministry, it is good for us to reflect on which of the four purposes of having a school would be valid today, which purposes wouldn't, what is the importance of religious education, especially higher education? How would we respond to Elder Geddert's closing reflection? And how do we educate our young people? How can we improve? What can we learn from this part of our story? As we continue our mission to educate in the Word of God May we be faithful and continue to follow the way of Christ in the next 100 years of ministry.